This is VOA News. I'm David Byrd in Washington. Clashes have broken out and one truck of aid was set on fire along the Colombia-Venezuela border as supporters of opposition leader Juan Guaido attempted to bring humanitarian aid into Venezuela. Riot police fired tear gas and are blocking a bridge between Colombia and Venezuela. Protesters have repeatedly tried to get past the line of police and soldiers. At least two people were killed in clashes with security forces along the border with Brazil. Meanwhile, embattled President Nicolas Maduro told thousands of supporters in Caracas that he has broken diplomatic relations with Colombia. Maduro also asked that all Colombian diplomats leave the country within 24 hours. Millions of Venezuelans have fled the oil-rich country because of a lack of goods, services, and medical care. Maduro says there is no humanitarian crisis in his country and that any aid is part of a plan to overthrow his government. Vote counting is underway in Nigeria's hotly contested presidential election that was marred by violent outbreaks in the northeastern and southern parts of the country. President Mohamedou Buhari was among the first of the country's more than 72 million eligible voters to cast a ballot in his hometown of Daura when the polls opened Saturday. Despite reports of occasional violence, there appeared to be no significant disruptions across the West African country. Some polling stations, however, opened so late in the day that voting in affected areas might be extended to Sunday. Voting hours were also extended in some areas Saturday due to ballot machine malfunctions. President Buhari and his primary opponent, businessman and former vice president Atiku Abu Bakr, both said they were confident of winning the election, which was delayed one week because of logistical problems. This is VOA News. Transparency was the focus of the third day of the Vatican Summit on Clerical Sexual Abuse by members of the Catholic Church. Germany's Cardinal Reinhard Marx said that the Church had obscured sexual abuse cases. Sabina Castelfranco has more from Rome. After Bishop spent two days reflecting on the issues of responsibility and accountability, Cardinal Marx used his speech to call for more traceability and transparency. Files that could have documented the terrible deeds and named those responsible were destroyed or not even created. Instead of the perpetrators, the victims were regulated and silence imposed on them. Pope Francis, who has come under intense pressure over the failure to deal with increasing cases of clerical sexual abuse, will close the summit on Sunday with a mass attended by all participants and a final speech. Sabina Castelfranco for VOA News, Rome. Thousands of yellow vest protesters took to the streets across France on Saturday for a 15th straight weekend of demonstrations, trying to re-energize supporters while tamping down on violence and anti-Semitism in the movement's ranks. Police clashed with demonstrators near the Eiffel Tower in Paris, while local authorities in the central city of Clermont-Ferrand urged residents to avoid downtown, where 2,500 yellow vest protesters clashed with police. Elsewhere, activists blocked access to an Amazon platform in the southwestern city of Toulouse. The protests started in November to oppose fuel tax hikes, but have expanded into a broader public rejection of French President Emmanuel Macron's economic policies, which protesters say favor businesses and the wealthy over ordinary French workers. Grammy-winning singer R. Kelly appeared in court in Chicago on charges he sexually assaulted four women, including three teenagers. Cook County Judge John Lyke set bail at $1 million and called the allegations disturbing. The judge also ordered Kelly to avoid contact with anyone under the age of 18. The 52-year-old Kelly, whose real name is Robert Kelly, was charged in a 10-count indictment on Friday. Kelly's attorney, Stephen Greenberg, told reporters that prosecutors had rushed to judgment because of public pressure. And officials in northeastern India say at least 84 people died and another 200 people, some of them in critical condition, were hospitalized after drinking bootleg liquor. Many of the victims are tea plantation workers. Police have initiated an investigation and several people have been arrested. For more, log on to...